venerable religious and dear parishioners. In my sermon for New Year's Day on the Feast of the Circumcision, it could have given the impression, I'm sure it didn't because you know your Catholic faith, but for somebody new to it, it would have sounded like everything depends on us and how hard we try. I did even quote that great inventor who sadly lacked the gift of faith, but the inventor Thomas Edison, who gave many quotes throughout his life about keep trying, never give up. It's the next step you take after many efforts and seeming failures, or even failures, and you will reach that success. But the message that I want to emphasize today would almost seem like it's opposite, and that is that we have to rely on the gift of God. We have to rely on God's gifts, his grace. And just look at the gifts that God gave to the three wise men. It is truly amazing when we, you know, we know, first of all, so little about them definitively, but certain things we can infer that they traveled a very great distance, that they believed in the star, they had, they were exercising a number of virtues, and to come from this far away and to prostrate before a child that didn't bear the outward signs of kingship and royalty. And after all, they were, look how poor Mary and Joseph were. But nevertheless, they made that act of faith. They believed in the message. And so what I want to emphasize today is that we need God's grace. We need the gift of God. Yes, the wise men gave gifts, gold, incense, myrrh. They gave such a tremendous gift of traveling a great distance. You know how it is when the greater distance you have to travel to go help somebody out? The more that is an act of love, the more it is something that the other person appreciates. You had to come this far to do this for me. It's not like you walk next door or maybe down the block. You traveled hundreds of miles. You greatly inconvenienced yourself. It's very meaningful when people do that. So they gave these gifts. They gave their, their adoration. They gave their uh, worship. They gave the sacrifice of a very long journey. But here's the point. God gave them a lot more than they ever gave to him. What did God give? What were the gifts that God had given to them? Grace, sanctifying grace and actual grace. He gave them the gift of faith. And these are more precious than anything material. And certainly God's gift to us are greater than anything we can give to God. So this is what I'm hoping for you to think of, how much of a gift God gave to the wise men, to the magi, to the kings. He gave them also courage, and he also gave them advice. They came to Jerusalem and... The star refused to shine over Jerusalem, the holy city. Why? We don't know for sure. Scripture doesn't tell us why. We could speculate on the reasons. It could be Jerusalem wasn't worthy to have the star shine above it. Unfortunately, what should have been the holy city was really not holy at all or 
not the degree of holiness that should have been there. Maybe that was the reason. So the wise men didn't know what to do. They, they sought advice, and that was a gift from God too. Even though they went to Herod, what did Herod tell them? Well, first of all, he didn't know, and he asked this, the Pharisees, the scribes, and they gave him the answer that God had given in prophecy centuries before. They all knew the answer. It's Bethlehem. Bethlehem, I would estimate, I was able to take it on a bus drive. It took about 45 minutes. Of course, it wasn't a direct uh, route, but maybe 10 miles, 15 miles. It's within sight of Jerusalem. There it is. And so it wasn't Herod giving them the, the advice. It was God giving them the advice, the prophecy was revealed that was there from centuries ago. So these were the gifts that God had given to the Magi. And look at all their effort, but again, they needed the grace of God. And we too, as hard as we should try to become saints, to fulfill the will of God in our lives, remember we desperately need the gifts of God. We need the gift of grace. We need the gift of faith. Of course, it's been given to us already, but an increase in faith. The gift of courage. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Ghost, fortitude. To not give up the battle, to not give up the effort. We also need good advice. We need to seek spiritual direction. We can't do it all on our own. And so again, this is the message I want to emphasize today. I guess January 1st was how hard you need, we all need to work. But today's message is how much we need the grace of God. Our Lord had even said to the apostles, without me, you can do nothing. That's how much we need God's grace. We can't merit it on our own. We have to beseech God through prayer. That's how important our prayer life is. It doesn't mean, of course, and unfortunately some of the Protestant reformers took it to the stage of just believe and you're saved. That's like having everything handed to you on a golden platter. It doesn't work that way. I think St. Augustine put it best. He said, the same God who created you without any cooperation on your part will not save you without cooperation on your part. So that's the, the answer. We have to try hard, but we need the grace of God. And we admire and rejoice in the gifts that God gave to the wise men, even as they were giving their finest to God. Another great way to look at this right balance between our own effort and God's grace is I think what St. Ignatius Loyola wrote. He says, pray like it all depends on God and work like it all depends on you. I think that just beautifully conveys the, 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 the message here that we have to keep in mind. It is a paradox, but it's not a contradiction. They both work together. Let us beg for grace. Let us beg for faith, an increase in faith. The, as the apostle said 30 years later, Lord, Increase our faith. The man who wanted Jesus to cure his son who was possessed by the devil, he says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I know I need this increase. And yes, seek advice. I think it was St. Bernard who said, if we have ourselves as a spiritual director, we're following a fool. 
In other words, we can't give ourselves all the advice we need. We, yes, we need God's inspiration, but let's seek help in our spiritual growth from a spiritual director, a confessor, one who can uh, give us enlightenment when we need it. I don't think any of the saints, or I can think of very few saints who didn't make use of the gift of spiritual direction in order to help them advance. Again, it's that difficulty we have of seeing ourselves in the right perspective at times, and that outside view is what really helps us. So let us, on this Feast of the Epiphany, rejoice in the gift. The gifts that we can give to God are love, our heart. And our Lord doesn't seek so much the physical gifts as he seeks the spiritual gifts. Gold represents charity. It represents the love of God and love of neighbor. Incense represents the gift of prayer. And myrrh signifies the gift of our sacrifice, the things we give up, the things we suffer and endure for the love of God. Keep giving those gifts throughout your life. But let us rejoice in the fact that God has always given us and will give us more than we could ever give to him. We need that grace. He will give it. And it does the most amazing things. It will help us to do the seemingly impossible. It's that great. It's that wonderful. Rejoice in God's gift of grace to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.